Right, welcome back to the Jack Ward Football Podcast. It's that time of the year where we preview the first leg of the League One playoff semi-finals. Of course, this year it is Peterborough United against Sheffield Wednesday and Bolton against Barnsley. So much to chat about, some really exciting ties here, lots to delve into. Let me know in the comment section down below what are your predictions for these League One playoff semi-finals. We'll be doing previews and live match reactions straight after the game. So make sure you leave a like and subscribe importantly hitting that notification bell as well because then when we do go live you will be notified amazing stuff let's get straight into it beginning with Peterborough United against Sheffield Wednesday so first and foremost, let's take a look at the last meetings between these two clubs this season. The first game ended Peterborough United 2, Sheffield Wednesday 0. The XG was 1.13 to 0.31. Peterborough were in complete control of the game. Wednesday were a man down on the 34th minute. So, of course, there was a bit of a circumstance there and that did play a massive part and completely shifted the rhythm of the game. Peterborough had 61% possession, 11 more shots than Sheffield Wednesday. Wednesday also failed to register a single big chance across the 19 minutes. Looking back, that was one of Peterborough's best performances of the season. Of course, game state, a red card quite early on in the match did play a massive part, as dismissals normally do. But still, a very confident and quite comfortable 2-0 Peterborough win in the home fixture last time these two clubs met this season. And in the second game, it finished Sheffield Wednesday 1, Peterborough nil. The XG was 0.98 to 0.1. So a much better showing from Darren Moore's side and limited Peterborough to practically nothing. In fact, they had zero shots on target, no big chances, almost the opposite to the first game we saw between the two sides this season. And it's important to mention at that point, Sheffield Wednesday were on course to win the league or certainly get automatic promotion. Two very different games there in their last meetings, almost opposites, proving how fascinating this playoff encounter can be between these two sides. So when it comes to key players, there really is a lot to choose from for either side. For Peterborough, though, I went with Jack Taylor. Right now, everything is going through him. He is the machine. He is the dictator in that Peterborough United midfield. Eight non-penalty goals, five assists. He's created nine big chances, averaging 1.2 key passes per 90 and 2.4 shots per 90 as well. Everything is going through him. He's comfortable playing in a more offensive and defensive third. In fact, I'll bring his heat map on the screen right now. Winning the ball back in the defensive area and then playing brilliantly in transition, averaging 1.8 tackles per 90. And then, of course, like I said earlier, 1.2 key passes per 90 as well, breaking the play up and then playing brilliantly in transition. There is no doubt Jack Taylor will be crucial in Peterborough getting something from this first leg. So for Sheffield Wednesday, I went with Barry Bannon. I know it is the obvious one, but I think the bottom line is when Barry Bannon plays well, Sheffield Wednesday play well as well. Seven goals and 13 assists in League One this season. 13 big chances created, 3.1 key passes per 90 creating chances around zone 13 and zone 14. That's more the attacking and wide left area of the pitch. His exquisite passing, long switches of play, his very direct dribbling ability has caused so many problems for so many sides across the season, as Barry Bannon always does in Sky Bet League One and for most sides that he plays for. In the last 10 games, he's registered seven goal contributions and five of those were assists. He also has a 70% opposition pass accuracy, which, to be honest with you, considering the amount amount of passes that he makes, 26.8 per game, has a pretty impressive pass accuracy. Something else that came up when researching Barry Bannon this season was all seven of his goals in Sky Bet League One have been scored with his left foot. If Peterborough do anything when it comes to nullifying and stopping Barry Bannon, show him onto his right foot, quite interesting and could be key for Peterborough when stopping Barry Bannon. When it comes to key battles, I know we've just spoken about them, but I actually believe Jack Taylor and Barry Bannon will be quite an interesting clash in that midfield. I also think Aidan Flint and Johnson Clark Harris will be quite an interesting one-on-one -on -one battle as well. Of course, Aidan Flint normally being that central centre-back in that back three that Darren Moore plays, and Johnson Clark Harris leading the line for Peterborough United. Aidan Flint has won 74% of his aerial duels this season, helped by his six foot four frame. That does come in quite handy when winning those aerial duels. Physically, he's one of the strongest defenders in the league. So dealing with the bullish, very physical Johnson Clark Harris that scored 26 goals in Sky Bet League 1 this season, that's going to be really interesting. Watch out for Flint and Clark Harris. That could be quite a fascinating clash. So next up, let's take a look at some potential lineups that Darren Ferguson and Darren Moore could select for this upcoming clash. You can see on the screen right now, I've put together a potential lineup for both Sheffield Wednesday and Peterborough, starting with the home side Peterborough. I went with Norris, a back four of Burroughs, Edwards, Kent and Ward. A midfield three of no 
Coburn, Taylor and Capralu. A front three of Mason Clark, Clark Harris and Poku. As for Sheffield Wednesday, a classic back three that Darren Moore has used all season with this Wednesday side. Dawson in goal, Flint, Iorfa and Brown. Left wing back Johnson, right wing back Liam Palmer, Volks, Bannon and Windass. The three in midfield with Windass being slightly more in a more advanced number 10. Shadow striker role looks to be fit for this game. And then a front two of Smith and Patterson. So, Honestly, some really, really interesting matchups here. I know we just spoke about key battles, Flint and uh, Clark House. You can see both of them together there. That is going to be quite an interesting duel. So when you do put it like that, there's going to be some really interesting duels. Clark Harris and Flint, we've already spoken about. Uh, Bannon and Taylor are also going to be really interesting. I actually also think Volks and Taylor are going to be quite a strong duel as well. And quite a battle between those two players. Volks normally operating in a more deeper position. A defensive midfielder in that two with Bannon with Windass slightly higher. Volks will be looking to stop Taylor in this game because Taylor was running the show against Barnsley in the last game. More of an advanced player, which I think actually means Taylor and Bannon won't directly be involved together as much, I don't think. I think it's going to be more Taylor and Volks. Averaging two tackles per 90, one clearance per 90 as well, Volks. He's got a really good record when you look at trying to stop and keep players quiet and doing about his business quite quietly, but doing the dirty work in style. Volks, I would say, don't get booked. Don't get booked in this game because against Oxford, he had that role almost with Brannigan and Marcus Brown. Don't get booked to Volks because if he does, he's going to try and have to be a little bit more cautious with his challenge, which is something that he doesn't really want to do. So Volks, I think he can play that role really well and has done. I think him and Taylor could be one to watch out for. Also, Edwards and Kent moving back to his Peterborough back four here. Two very different formations, a back four and a back three. But I think Edwards and Kent, it's going to be quite interesting one-on-one -on -one with Michael Smith and Patterson if that is the two strikers that Darren Moore goes with. I think it probably will be. I thought Edwards and Kent were fantastic against Barnsley and they've got to be at their best again to keep the likes of Smith and Patterson quiet. Looks as though with where they've sort of looked... Um, left and right if you like Smith has normally played on the right Patterson on the left when they have played it with each other Smith very physical great in the air as well he's going to try and play with his back to goal roll the defender and again use that really good physical ability that he does possess I think him and Edwards that's going to be quite an interesting one with Kent and Patterson as well very very similar of course it is important to say this is a predicted lineup with a bit of what I would go with but Windass being back is probably the only doubt He's expected to make the squad. If he's available to start, I would start him. 18 goal contributions this season. Windass, he's been injured for quite a long time, so I understand not rushing him in. But in a big game like this, I think Windass could be the difference. That is what I've gone with, highlighting some really interesting battles. Of course, there will be more, but I think Clark Harris and Flint, Volks and Taylor, Edwards and Smith with Kent and Patterson, there's going to be some really interesting duels in there. Who's going to come out on top? Normally, the winning side. Let's find out. Let's move on to my prediction. So next up, my prediction. What is my prediction for this first leg affair? I can't sit on the fence. It's important to mention Peterborough have won all three of their last three home games against Sheffield Wednesday. So a good home record against their opposition on Friday night. Home advantage will play a part. 44% of the wins have come from the home side in Sky Bet League One this season. That's important to say as well. And I do believe Peterborough are going to have to go to Hillsborough with a lead. I think going to Hillsborough, knowing that Wednesday have got to chase them, is going to be important. I think trying to, or going to have to chase Wednesday at their home ground the week after, is going to be a real challenge. I don't think that's going to be a way that Peterborough get through this playoff semi-final. My prediction, it is so close, painfully tight, but I've gone with Peterborough to edge this game 1-0. Really close. Probably slightly unpopular with those Wednesday supporters. Let me know yours in the comment section down below. I think it's either going to be a draw one all or Peterborough edge it 1-0. But I'm not going to sit on the fence. I'm going to go 1-0 to Peterborough in this game. That sounds unpopular, but I'm going to go 1-0. So the next semi-final, it's Bolton against Barnsley. Let's take a look at the last meetings between these two sides this season. The first game was Bolton nil, Barnsley nil. The XG was 0 0.52 to 0 0.34. The less said about that game, the better. Lots of long-range efforts, not really ever testing the goalkeeper. A pretty rubbish game. A few chances here and there, but generally not much to take from it at all. Nil-nil in the first game. In the second game, very, very different. And one for Barnsley to forget. It finished Barnsley nil, Bolton 3 
2.3, the XG 0.37 to 2.14. It was a game, like I said, for Barnsley to forget. They were down to 10 men for 80 minutes of the match. An 11th minute red card for Anderson completely shifted the game in Bolton's direction. Barnsley hardly had a sniff and Bolton just tore them apart throughout. Bolton created four big chances and had a 1.77 better off expected goal. Of course, big circumstances in the game going down to 10 men and being a man down for 80 minutes is a very, very big issue to deal with. Definitely up against it, you could say. But Barnsley know they can't repeat that whatsoever going into this semi-final affair. The last time Barnsley won a league match at Bolton was a Premier League game in 1997. They won that one 2-1. They did beat them in the FA Cup 2-1, Barnsley, about two years ago. But in the last time they won a league game was a Premier League match in 1997. A long time ago for that. So when it comes to key players for Barnsley, I went with Luca Connell. Not enough has been said about this player this season. I think he's been incredible. Connell is at the heart of that midfield. That's been performing so well this season. He's contributed to seven goal involvements, five of them being assists, four big chances created as well. Connell is a great example of a tra traditional box-to-box -box midfielder. 1.4 key passes per 90, but also some very impressive defensive numbers as well. 1.5 tackles per 90, 1.1 interceptions per game as well. So talk about a box-to-box -box midfielder, not afraid of the job in the offensive area, but also very, very good in the defensive part of the pitch as well. Also, his delivery from set pieces is incredible, both corners and free kicks. Luke Connor is definitely somebody to watch out for in this tie. For Bolton Wanderers, I went with Carl Dempsey, another underrated name that I think can make a difference and will make a difference in this game. In this case, for Bolton, five goals and two assists this season, creating seven big chances. He can play as a number 10, a number 8, and even as a number 6. The last couple of weeks, he has been playing as a more advanced position in that number 10, behind the two up front that Ian Everett likes to play. Very unpredictable. It does offer them quite an unpredictable advanced midfielder. Playing alongside the likes of Sheehan, Morley, I think is going to make an extremely strong central area of the pitch for Bolton. We're going to come on to lineups in just a second and speak about the key areas. I think the central areas of the field are going to be quite fascinating. It wouldn't surprise me if we see Dempsey versus Connell. Let's talk about Connell being a key player for Barnsley, Dempsey being a key player for Bolton. Together, that could be a really interesting matchup. And when speaking about key battles, I do truly believe that midfield is going to be a battlefield. I really, really do. I know it's a cliche in football games are won and lost in that midfield. And we will go into a little bit more detail about it later when putting together some potential lineups. But that central area of the field is going to be really interesting to break down. I also think Cadden and Bradley are going to be a really interesting matchup. Cadden playing, of course, as a left wing back. Bradley playing as a right wing back. Cadden has five goals and three assists this season. Bradley has five goals and four assists this season too. So both very, very important players in the system, both playing as the wide outlets. But which one is going to get more of the joy? That's going to be really interesting. Bradley and Cadden and a battlefield. Let's look at the potential lineups that Ian Everett and, of course, Michael Duff could field in this game. So you can see on the screen right now a potential lineup for both Barnsley and Bolton, beginning with the home side. Bolton, Trafford in goal, Johnston, Santos and Toll, John, Sheehan, Morley and Bradley. Dempsey in a more advanced role and Kunchingu and Charles leading the line. We're going to touch on the big points in there because Kunchingu, lots of different striking options with Dion Charles and also midfield possibilities as well. But for Barnsley, Isted in goal, Anderson, Thomas and Kitchen, Kane, Connell and Phillips in midfield with Williams and Cadden, the two fullbacks, Norwood and Cole leading the line. So the first big talking point is probably got to be Anderson. You can see there is a star next to his name. He has a doubt going into this playoff first leg, which is a massive concern. He hasn't been training with the squad for the last couple of weeks. He hasn't been part of the matchday squad for the last couple of weeks as well. Him being a concern and a doubt is a problem. It really, really is. He's been rock solid for Barnsley all season. Missing your skipper and captain in this type of game, in this calibre of game, is just a massive blow. If he is fit then he's definitely going to start. Of course he is. So I have put him in there. He is a bit of a concern, but Michael Duff is remaining hopeful that he will play a part in this match. So Anderson, if he is fit, of course, he'll definitely be in there. Highlighting that midfield, I think, is also really important. We spoke about it earlier when these key battles came up in conversation. Highlighting this area of the pitch, moving that across there, you can see lots of bodies in there. Kane, Sheehan, Connell, Dempsey, Morley and Phillips. It's going to make a really interesting battle. Of course, the cliche being games won and lost in that midfield. But when you look at the sheer amount of quality in that midfield, there is a lot in there. A lot in the central areas of the pitch. I think whoever wins this midfield battle has a really big chance of winning this leg. 
I really do. And same in the second leg, really. Kane is a bit more a deep-lying player, deep-lying midfielder. Phillips drifts as more of a Mazzala attacking, uh, moving into the zone 13, zone 14 areas, a more advanced area. Sheehan and Morley, and then Dempsey can play as a number eight, but also in recent weeks has played more advanced in that number 10. So Dempsey and Connell, of course, Connell being the more defensive option for Barnsley, like I said earlier, that could be quite an interesting duel between those two players. But I think the three in there, um, for either side and for both sides, is going to be really fascinating because there's some real quality in there and stopping the source is going to be really important. Winning that midfield battle is going to be really fascinating as well. When it comes to that strike partnership for Bolton, I think it is still a little bit up in the air. I went with Kunchunga and Charles. I think Charles will and should start with Kunchunga still undecided. I went with him because of how well he, they did together in that Papa John's Trophy final against Plymouth and the both sort of goal involvements they were part of in that game. And together, they do have a very good record. But it could be Shola Shiratira alone from Manchester United, who scored against Bristol Rovers for Derby at the weekend. It could be Mandulu, Dan and It could be Bidvarsen, who's coming back to fitness. At Abeja, of course, they signed in January from Burton. It could be Cameron Jerome. Lots of options. But I think in the big games and the really one, you know, the ones that really matter, the Papa John's Trophy final was one that I think did shine a light on Kunchinga and Charles working really well together. That could be the two that he never goes with. Same with Barnsley, really. Norwood and Cole, they've got Watters. They've got lots of different names in there. Uh, but I think it will be Norwood and Cole. And I did edge towards Charles and Kunchungu. Also, very limited overloads as well. I think with similar formations, I can't see Michael Duff or Ian ever change the system for this game. I think it is going to be a back three for both of these sides with Williams, John, Bradley and Cadden being the wing-backs, providing the width. Lots of quality in that midfield, as said already. And like I said... Who knows what's going to happen with the two strikers, but I think it is going to be a two-striker formation for both of these clubs. Try and play the game out wide. That could be the mentality, spread the play, but of course, who's going to get the joy? That's going to be down to the battles of the two sets of wingbacks. Let's move on to my prediction for this game. So when it comes to my prediction, very little between these two sides. Barnsley slightly wobbly in the last couple of weeks, but they could have been on the beach. They really could have been, knowing they secured a playoff spot quite a while ago. Bolton have the fifth best home record this season. Barnsley have the fourth best away record this season. So very, very close. Bolton defensively pride themselves with the second best defence out of any other club in the division. So of course, this is just my first leg preview and prediction. So looking at the home record and the away record for both of these sides is important. So the moment of truth, I've gone with a 2-1 Bolton win, a home win in the first leg. Let's see what happens in the game. I really can't wait for it. Two very, very interesting semi-finals there. Please make sure you leave a like and subscribe. Remember, notification bell, really important. That way, you'll be notified when we go live for the match reactions straight after the game. My thoughts, your thoughts, discussion, interactivity through the roof. It's going to be a lot of fun. Until next time, I've been Jack. This has been the Jack Wood Football Podcast. Lots of action when it comes to the playoffs. This has been my first leg prediction and preview. I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care.